Vittore, partito. 221, sei terza, pick up. Ciao. and me is very special because of the very distinct style and design but also because of the basic story. I think everybody would like to have something change the dimension. It's a fantastic view of life. You know, everybody was a child once and when I was a kid I always thought I would be great to be able to fly. Kids really relate to it. You know they start staring and they start talking to their parents and then sometimes they come up and they're like are you Mia? And I'm like yeah. She leads a fairly normal life outside and then she gets to escape this magical world which is cool. It's all about that imagination triumphs over the sober real world. My daughter, when she was uh, seven, eight, I had to read books to her. All was about horses and unicorns. And uh, by that time, I met Gerhard Hahn, my partner, and said, man, uh, let's do something on unicorns. Kids love it so much, and I think it offers a lot of content. So I went back home and I thought about something that girls might like, and then I thought, okay, the next best to horses and unicorns is elves. And basically that was a kickoff for the series. So we started to bring it to our team and, and then develop uh, Me and Me. We know that with the second season we have even a bigger uh, responsibility because we had to bring the show to even a next step in terms of quality, in terms of filmography, in terms of visual effects. The live action creates a realistic identity for them. Last time was in with school and or fellow students, professors. This time is with grandfather, family, friends, boyfriends maybe. Me and me is about friendship. Isn't it a wonderful thing to find new friends? Especially when you don't have too many to begin with. <laughs> it's not a romantic kind of friendship. It's more that people stick together in rough times and um, try to find a way to achieve something, a common goal. We can definitely beat Rixel if we work together. So we were thinking hard when we developed the story arc for the second season, what could be the new threat. So definitely you need to stick to your main characters, but you also want to surprise your audience. Yoletta's whole role is to be the mean girl. You should totally stop working at that other time. I'll keep that in mind. I'll keep you in mind. You don't want to know what that is. It's a freaking monster that bit me. And I'm going to sue. I'm going to sue the production. It starts off just as the beginning. You know, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of tension between the two of them. There's a lot of Violeta being jealous of Mia. The Contessa puts a lot of pressure on Violeta to be, you know, the best horseback rider. She's the mother of Violeta, um, the antagonist of Mia. And she's a snob, um, upper class. You know, there's that thing where you have to please the parents, you know, she's probably been doing it her whole life. She's used to it. She's used to doing exactly what her mother tells her to do. You really think this is the best use of your time, so close to the tournament? Usually I, I play, I pretend to be sweetie, romantic, but never, never bad. It's very nice <laughs> to be bad. There was one a character belonging to the bad guys that was General Gagona. I really like her. I think she has her goals and, and, and desires. She was not that skillful in uh, capturing unicorns, but she had a certain flavor. Oh, oh, not again! And that's why we said, let's start with the character of Gagona. A guy called Rixel, he comes in disguise as a circus director. Hear this, elves? I know you don't like me anymore, but you are in possession of some things that are rightfully mine. He's after the animals. These two bad guys are as different as can be. They become an odd couple, 
They have to work together. Use your own one! Then do your laundry already! Our heroes, of course, defeat the bad guys because they are capable of team building and Gargona and Rixel are simply not. The way it's written, it just comes really naturally. What kind of character everyone is, both in the live action and, and when I'm dubbing the, the cartoon part. Um, I think Mario is very nice, but also um, very sure of himself. You want to get that raise? He works a lot, the boy. For me, for the Contessa. He's got this really cool relationship with Renzo and then Mia comes in and just kind of throws him off a little because he cannot figure out why she's disappearing all the time, why she's being weird sometimes. I was squatting underneath the tractor thing. Now I've got pieces of straw in my hair in places I won't mention. This grandpa is just like an old EP or rocker. He, he likes very much me. We worked many times with the German producer for the style of this man, to find guitars, uh, drums, uh, many memories of his life. Your farm is not nothing at all. It's worth something to me. The bank manager comes here and then they said, no, you didn't pay that, so we take, we take all the farm, and then Mia, arrive and try to set up all the things. Mario, if you don't come up with something soon... Mia, look at that. A horse jumping tournament. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I, I could ride Safra and win. And she brings a bit of life to this place that's kind of boring a bit without her around. <laughs> <laughs> What we do here in Berlin is come up with outlines um, that's like two pages per episode with the, the story, the A plot, and also uh, the B plot, what is going on between the heroes. And then we send the stuff out to our Canadian colleagues. They write the first draft. We check it, whether the tone, the pace, and all that is in line. When we write the scripts, and these wonderful artists come, they read like two lines. It's our description of the location. And then their imagination goes wild. Panfilm is a company that exists for 35 years, so we have the benefit of having a team already in place and with uh, artists that are all very dedicated and they're all outstanding. And I was uh, very, very happy to work with a character designer, Neshed al Zubaydi since about 15, 18 years now. I'm actually more the guy for the, for the evil characters on, ah. on the show. He <laughs> is an evil character. <laughs> and the same with the set designer, Mario Kuchinkehofer. It's very difficult to find a unique style. The Rainbow Studio did a great job modeling all the CGI characters and sets you see on the show, and there are lots of them. We're working with Gerard a lot. He likes very pastel colors, like a watercolor paint, basically. That's what we're trying to mimic onto the 3D look. The target audience was quite clear. We, we thought that uh, just repeating the same accessoires would, would be a bit boring. We created that pink Gustav Klimt thing, <laughs> which is a contradiction a little bit, but it worked very fine. We found a style that is that, that speeds both the need for a girly look, but also have some quality in, in certain aspects of the design. That was basically uh, Gerhard's vision. We wanted to have a unique style, uh, which is different from anything you see on television these days. And I think we discovered it. I like actually that faddle. He is almost like an onion or this kind of simple shape. And um, simple is harder to achieve than some complex characters. But I also like Politeos a lot. I think this is actually the best character I created for this show, for myself. And I also like how he is written. I'm so glad you're back. Do wipe your feet before you come in and destroy more of my home. We tried to give him here and there a moment and a scene or an emotion uh, where you find out he's not only after the money. <laughs> I've had quite enough oh. of you for today. Ah! Oh! First there is an idea and then it gets drawn on paper. Based on those drawings you try to set up an animated storyboard, which is basically the script drawn to paper 
and what happens. In order to have this animatic set well, we need the voice recordings. As beautiful as I remember, even more so. That's basically the timing. The whole animation gets built on that timing. As beautiful as I remember, and even more so. Baby Blue! <laughs> the dragons are just protecting their brood. They don't mean to harm us. I don't see anything, so I'm just reading all of my lines one after the other, which is sometimes a little bit weird because it sounds like I'm talking to myself. Can you hear me? Hello? In this case, it's, it's more fun than usual dubbing because you're in pretty crazy situations, yelling, falling. It's fun, obviously, to get into character. Looks like my visit is just about over. Can you take this? No, I actually have to check up on some stuff. See you later. Bye. <sighs> there she goes being mysterious again. You feed the animatic and then everything builds up. Characters get modeled and they get put into the setting and then the lighting comes in. All characters are different from each other and move in the right way. And so, animation is acting. It's very, very important to study people. You're lying! Varya would never work for you! Is that so? <gasps> we got uh, 117 characters at the moment uh, in production. There are many forests, which is, by the way, the most difficult thing to do in 3D. Sets are huge, you have to see everything toward the horizon. It's a very complex uh, workflow because it goes from like hand-drawn color keys into the 3D uh, characters and sets that we see. And uh, also the hairs. Instead of using like a mass of geometry, that's what we usually do in a TV series, we're actually using strands of hairs, so they look more realistic. The greatest challenge is to control visual effects. Uh, some episodes appear a character called Dark Health. Its face is generated by the smoke, so I have to control the smoke and give it a shape. The design of the, of the farm I'm very impressed by, it's like something out of Wizard of Oz. For the live action we didn't save money to rebuild uh, the whole settings, like in those live action production of when I was a kid, uh, like uh, Pippi Longstockings and uh, you know the Fanta Giro and so many others. We came here in the countryside of Center Italy where uh, the setting is already a special world. This land is full of very beautiful places and beautiful landscapes. Then uh, it's very easy to find a beautiful location. 300 tables, put on one by one. So the red ones are all fake? Yeah, all. April is September, probably, at the end of September. Now it's only peach. A raw sound. We put together a very top team in terms of uh, film directing, photography. Best crew. Boys and the toys. I'm being a very professional director, isn't Marco didn't direct the first series, and I met him during the auditions for the role of Mario. And she just seemed really nice right away. Never lost his temper with us. And not that there was any need to or a situation that, but he's always calm. Please, can you say to that guy to go away? Please! Piano, <laughs> ragazzi.
piano piano, adesso piano. state guardando piano piano vi sollevate sulle sedie poco poco in piedi su tensione tensione oh, oh, ah! It's difficult to explain what I feel when I make my work because uh, it's uh, every time something completely different. You have to change your mind, to change your point of view. I think that's the most important thing is everyone falls into the same tonality of lightness because it's for, it's for children. And I think Marco has a good sense of feel for, for that. So. Yeah, he does give me instructions, which is always good because Sometimes you need a bit of guidance. And he's always very straight to the point. No, I really like how he works. We also had a fantastic dialogue coach, uh, Rebecca, who helped us out. The, the, the cast is a mix of uh, some Italian, some British, some American actors. So uh, it was good that she was there. Next ride, again. and The customer, I don't know the name in English, She's very, very good, very close to Audrey Edward. The makeup, the her stylist, everybody. We have a very tight schedule. It's going really well. Got a really good first assistant who's really amazing and manages to. He's held together very big sets, so for him, he he knows how to deal with people. Last one, last one. Most of the people that are working in this show has worked with American projects, uh, European projects. Uh, but it's not just for the language. It's really for the ability to work in a certain uh, organized way that uh, contemplates as little improvisation as possible. That, theoretically, in practice then, <laughs> we had to improvise a lot. The sun is going, no, see, we have to cover and, and make it shadow, make it even. What I do with my crops is my business, not the business of <laughs> you. Animals are, especially uh, if you exclude dogs, they are not really used to act. Mostly interesting was working with animals. We had some extremely cute ones like the kitty and the dog I love. I got on really well with the horse, Sapphire, right away. I got to um, canter around in the ring on the horse and that was really, really amazing. I know that now I, I will go to, to take horse riding lesson. I want to go on gallop, I want to, because I like that. While we are shooting this interview, there is an agent of the Animal Protection Association who is checking on the filming. And let's hope that uh, it will not be too rigid. Mm. Sir, thank you, man. Sometimes when I'm doing my job, I will start complaining and be like, I can't take this anymore. Then I see them like moving things around under the sun and holding things, and they're like still smiling, which is quite admirable. Trying to send an email. Hello. <laughs> A big hello to every people from Jamaica stage. Hello there. Hey, maybe it's maybe. For the interview later, eh? sorry, but for the moment we are busy. Yeah. yeah. When you see an animation film or series in the cinema or uh, in television, it looks so, so natural, so simple, and that's the great achievement. For me, it's a miracle. Every artist thinks differently, but we, we need to focus and put everything together and 
everything should be coherent and consistent. You have so many people working, although they are computers, with their hands. Hours and hours, days and days, months and so all in all it takes two and a half to three years to complete such a thing. Hey, we are the sound company in Berlin. We are doing the original mix in English. We have different sounds like uh, the music made by Gerd Keating. Atmos sears, special effects. Then, you know, we have uh, the foley's. Let's say we go on the street on stone, a man. And a woman, an elegant woman. With high heels. And on grass. On a wooden floor in a house. Or in a hospital. And the horse and the hooves I make with this coconuts. Then we have the uh, dubbing. Are you ready to head to the... And of course the original sound, we are mixing all of them together. So, we are responsible for the magic of the sound. The first season was uh, tremendously successful and uh, we couldn't believe it actually because it was sold in over 120 countries already. A hybrid production consisting of live action CG is something which usually the majors like Disney would tap into. And it was very tough at the beginning to sell the show. Now, of course, after it's playing so well, and it's a huge success in many territories, including Germany and Italy, it's more easy for us. So we had a vision and we never gave up. And against uh, all odds, we went through it. Mia, uh, which is Rosa Sellers, and even the antagonists, they get stopped for uh, autographs. I have a four years grandson. So I love the idea that my grandson will see this very nice fiction. It's just so satisfying to have like children on the street just burst out like with this huge smile and they're really happy. A feature film is in planning. We're working hard on the script at the moment. I'm not going to tell you what it's all about, but there's going to be unicorns and there's going to be lots of elves. Once uh, you transform a TV show into something which is part of the day life of the kids, uh, you become a lifestyle brand, then you really have uh, established something that can last for many years. You have done something that can uh, really touch the imagination and the heart of the kids, which is what we are trying to do every day. The making of only shows the, the so-called most important people, but in fact, you know, this would not be possible if all the other wonderful artists and people dedicated to this project wouldn't have helped. So I'd like to thank everybody. Vielen Dank.